All right, so now invariant is going to be an uh, axiom over here. So we're going to put uh, the balance B. B colon, you can see it becomes a membership operator right away. And it's going to be a function between account, A, C, C, O, U, N, T. And the account comes from the carrier set from context C0 over here. And don't forget, bank zero actually sees uh, C0. That's why the uh, that uh, carrier set will be visible to the machine. All right, account and a partial function plus dash and greater than. Exactly, right? Alternatively, go under the symbols table over here. You can see the various function over here. And the one I just used was, uh, let me see where it is. This apparently is a total function over there. I think the partial function is, you can definitely see the injections oh, over here. Partial function, there we go, right? That's exactly what I type. You also got other partial injection, partial subjection, and, uh, and, uh, and etc. right? I'll leave it to you. That's one of the tasks you have to do for lab one. All right, account and then two, uh, integer, right? What should be the syntactical, uh, what should be uh, ASCII character for integer? The Z over here. That should be just int. I N T space, right? It becomes the uh, mathematical symbol there. And enter. And control S to save it. Right? Everything is good right now, except that we got some yellow underline, which is more like a warning. If you move your uh, cursor over over here, variable is not initialized. Default assignment generated. Right? So that means we really uh well, whenever you got some variable over here, you really want to have some uh initial uh, initialization to initialize that to some valid value, right? In the case of balance, because it's actually a, a partial function between account and actually integer, right? We spoke about in the lecture. Uh, what would be the easiest one to really uh, to have a partial function? Empty function, just empty set. So what, what, what we can do is under initialization, if you actually, uh, put your cursor just to the right to the, to the initialization, right click, and then we're going to add an action over here for initialization, right? And then we got uh, this action one over here. There, there, there are several parts you can fill in. Action one is really some label over here. I would say leave it uh, like in the, uh, as default, it will be uh, action one, action two, action three, and etc. And over here, we want to initialize it. So what we want to say, uh, the B over here initially is going to be assigned to, I know in Java, the assignment operator will just be equal over here. Right? But since we're not constructing a model, it's not exactly we're doing variable assignments. We are actually somehow constructing the so-called before-after predicate. But I would say for this tutorial, you don't need to be bothered with that. I'll definitely cover that in the lecture later. So now just for now, remember that whenever you want to initialize or reassign some variable, you will say colon equal. Okay, colon equal. That's more like the assignment operator, roughly. Let me make an explicit note for you over here. Okay, over here. So whenever you talk about event action, right? The way to do it would be you're gonna say some variable v and then colon equal and then some value. And this colon equal over here, you can think about more or less. It's like a variable assignments, but we'll try to. Uh, make some uh, more formal account about what exactly it is in the lecture, but you don't need to worry about it now. So variable assignments. All right, that's something uh, you want to keep in mind. All right, so now how can we initialize that into? It's gonna uh, it's a partial function, so we can just put an empty relation. What will be the empty set? Well, curly brackets over here, left curly brackets, right curly brackets. That's an empty relation, right? Enter. Okay, we can save, all right? Everything is good, all right? Let's now take a look over here. We can close the C0, let's expand bank zero over here. There is certain proof obligation over here. Let's take a look quickly, right? If you double click on, well, let's take a look first. So this particular proof obligation has to do with the in, uh, initialization, right? It's pretty readable. So don't be too afraid. Uh, don't be afraid uh, to actually explore further yourself. I'll try to get, uh, go over as many as I can, but given a limited time for the tutorial, uh, I will need to leave some some of uh, the proof ob obligation to you. But let's look at th this one together. This one here, initialization here, is saying that uh, it's about initialization. 
and that is to do with invariant number one. So invariant one is something that we also want to somehow uh, prove, and then invariance over here. Let's take a look to see what, what they are, okay? If I double click on that, right, I need to switch to the proving perspective, click on that over here, and of course, uh, smiley face, that means it has been proved already. But we want to see exactly what's being proved. What's really being proved is exactly over here, okay? That, but what I want to show to you is why this has to be proved. Why? Okay. Let me now uh, try to switch to my iPad and then I'll explain to you why this proof, uh, proof obligation was there. Okay, let's now take a look. This is the machine that we have got so far. And we got context C0 imported to the machine. We got the variable B, the balance, and also it's a partial function over here. And then also initially it's going to be empty relation, right? What's happening over here, or oh, one thing to just to emphasize, this part over here is the invariance. Invariant must be preserved by every event. Whether or not the invariant was declared as an axiom or maybe the theorem, uh, it has to be maintained, right? So the only difference between axiom or theorem is axiom itself does not need, need to be proved separately. But if you actually try to declare an invariant as a theorem, there will be some extra. Uh, proof obligations that you have to prove. But for every event, you want to make sure you actually can establish for the initialization what to maintain by other non-initialization. You want to make sure you can do that for the invariance for every event. That's something we'll see later. Not necessarily this tutorial, but later. So this one over here is something that must be number one, initialized or established for the first time by initialization. Okay, kind of tricky to spell. All right, and number two, they sh uh, invariant should also be maintained by other events, other non-initialization events. Right? That's exactly what I just said verbally. Okay. And the proof, uh, the proof we are seeing right now, this guy over here, is actually number one, right? How is the invariant established over here? Basically, you can see over here, the invariant over here is the Boolean condition over here. It's a B is a member of accounts being a, uh, a member of the account partially, uh, it's a partial function between accounts and integer. Partial function and integer over here, right? And here we're saying that initially B is actually going to be assigned to empty set. So this colon equal over here, think more formally it's called substitution. But thinking about assignment is actually okay. Uh, let me just uh, write a little bit better. So B is going to be substituted by empty relation. That's a particular instance we want to have for the initialization. So that's why this predicate over here, the invariant must remain, uh, must be established to be true. So this part over here should hold, should hold in order to establish the invariance. All right? Hopefully that's clear to you. That's exactly why this part, this is the goal to be discharged by the prover. Exactly this is a member of that. All right? There should be no magic over here. We'll talk more about the systematic generation of proof uh, proof obligation later uh, in, the, in the lecture. But for the tutorial, just to show to you uh, some simple ones. All right, hopefully this one is clear to you. And as we also talk about in the lecture, empty relation is definitely a partial function because you just cannot find any witnesses to really disprove it. And if you wonder about what I just said, go to your lecture and then you will actually see exactly what I meant. I explained that in detail, so I don't need to repeat over here. All right, that's about the uh, explanation for the proof obligation. Let's now go back over here and let's now switch back to the event B perspective and you can close this and go back to the machine. All right, let's now move on.